Mr. Regev, in many ways, amongst the tragedy and, and the, the horrors of the past seven weeks since October the 7th, today was a moment uh, of hope. I agree. Uh, 13 Israelis have come out of Gaza. We have only can guess at this stage what they went through. Uh, six elderly women over 70 and uh, 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 children, the youngest two years old, her older sister four years old, another, another girl five years old, and a young boy nine years old, and their mothers. A and I think we have to say here what needs to be said now. You will recall on Sky when you interviewed a leader of Hamas, he said, we only attacked uh, uh, military targets on October 7th. So here we have a two-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, a nine-year-old released by Hamas. What does that say about the way we should understand Hamas's public statements? Well, Mr. Regev, I think what we have seen, uh, certainly our Sky teams uh, from uh, Khan Yunus in southern Gaza, released those images of the Red Cross convoy, bringing out those women, children, as you say, two-year-old, five-year-old, out of Gaza. And there was a moment uh, where we saw Palestinian children as well cheering as that convoy left. And I suppose that shows you the, the difficulties and the challenges that the Palestinians have also suffered. But we don't want to sort of focus too much on, on what Hamas, of course, that is pivotal. But just if you can focus in this moment, what a huge moment it is for your country, because it has been a moment of, of pain and horror. They now have 13 children, women, the elderly, back on Israeli soil back in the hands of uh, Israeli officials and hopefully medics soon. And so this is a moment of, of real pause for both sides because the images we saw were of Palestinian children standing in Khan Yunus cheering as that convoy left because for them it's also respite. So uh, obviously, but uh, let's be clear, we wouldn't have had this release unless Hamas felt it had to do so. And Hamas was under amazing pressure, and that pressure was ultimately from the military strikes by the IDF against its military machine and our ability to destroy its underground network of tunnels and, and to eliminate its, its senior command. And I think here there's an important lesson. Hamas are not suddenly uh, uh, humanitarians. They're only releasing hostages because they feel compelled to do so. And that's why we will continue uh, 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 the operation if they cease releasing ho uh, uh, hostages. You know, for four days, they've committed to release 50. We had 13 today. That's good. But they're still committed to re releasing another 37. And if they want to extend this humanitarian cause, they can release more hostages and will agree to an extension. But Hamas will only do these So that's things. what I, uh, I wanted to... Uh, that's what I wanted to get to, Mr. Regev, because, of course, this is for four days, and you would agree that today was, given the circumstances, a success. We saw the ceasefire kick in at 7 o'clock, and then we saw the hostages released later in the afternoon. And, of course, you have now released 39 Palestinian women and children. So, oh, can I argue, please, today, about, can I, can I, can I argue? Truth. Sorry, I, I, I can't let that stand, because it's like... They release children and we release children. I'm sorry, don't accept that. Here we have a two-year-old, a, 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 a four-year-old, a five-year-old and a nine-year-old. How can you compare that with a minor who is 16 or 17 years old who is involved in a stabbing attack or, a, or, or a throwing a petrol bomb or the other acts of violence? You can say women and minors, but to compare that to the Israeli two-year-old, I think is a bridge too far. Well, well... No, I, I, I understand what you're saying, Mr. Regev, and there is a 14-year-old who has been released as well. So what for? What was, minors, what was, he, what was his charge? What was his charge? Did you look? I, I don't know exactly. Did he stab someone or did he knife were. them or did he just carry uh, explosives for someone else? Uh, once again, you're talking about innocent, well, right now, young toddlers against I, I, Teenagers manipulated by different terrorist organizations, but nevertheless involved in violence. Mr. That's why Mr. they're Regev, in jail. The, the, 
the, the, the point I was trying to make here is that the deal itself has been completed on day one successfully. These exchanges right. have happened and they will continue if, the, if it goes in this way over the course of the four days. Now, you say, well, well let's go back to what the Israeli Defense Minister said a little earlier today, that operations will continue beyond the four days. However, if things go the way they are, in terms of the exchanges like they have today over the course of the four days, Israel would be open then to continue this because, as you say, there are still over 200 hostages held in Hamas captivity in Gaza. Correct. And we have said publicly that we will agree to the extension of the humanitarian pause if additional hostages are released. We said specifically, we will give you an extra day for 10 hostages, two extra days for another 10, three extra days for another 10. So the ball is in Hamas's court. We are ready to renew the military operation uh, 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 at the end of four days. But if Hamas wants the extension of the humanitarian pause, they know exactly what they need to do. Mr. Regev, uh, we have also had some reports, including from our camera operators inside Gaza, that there were some people who tried to move to northern Gaza to try and have a look at what's left of their homes or try and recover their dead, and they were shot at by the IDF. Have you got any sort of updates or information about that? Because we have teams on the ground who say that this took place. So I'm not going into the particulars of the incident. All I can say is everything that we've done is in accordance with the understandings reached for the humanitarian pause. I'm 100% sure of that. And so people can move around the Gaza Strip? They can go to the north? They can have a look Once at again, their possessions, I, their I homes, and, you, and recover you, the dead? I urge you to look very carefully what are the conditions placed in the humanitarian pause. We have no interest in seeing Hamas fighters return to the north. But, but if, if families were to return, is that something that, that the IDF would facilitate? Once again, you are presuming people want to voluntarily reform and that Hamas isn't putting fighters human shields that we've seen this strategy all along, of Hamas embedding itself amongst a, a civilian population to bring its fighters, to bring its explosives. The, the, the conditions of the humanitarian pause are clear. Hamas knows it. They can't pretend to ignore it. Mr. Regev, uh, of course, uh, countries like Qatar have been central in uh, negotiating this deal and ensuring that everything goes according to plan alongside uh, the United States and working with the Israelis, working with uh, Hamas. But they have also been extremely critical of the operations uh, that Israel has launched over the last seven days. They say the humanitarian situation there is a uh, crisis and it cannot continue. There will be international pressure that will mount. How will Israel respond to that? Well, we are in favor of humanitarian support for the people of Gaza. We're not opposed. We're eager to facilitate it. And in fact, we've designated specific areas in the south of Gaza to the west of Khan Yunus, not one area, a number of areas where we believe uh, there is not expected to be fighting. And we've urged the humanitarian organizations, the UN and the other ones, please set up uh, facilities there because we know these are safer zones. And we, we urge people to go there. We want to see tents there. We want to see field hospitals there. Uh, winter is approaching. We'd like to see the, the international organizations getting ready so that we don't have a, a, a unnecessary suffering. Uh, the ball is in their court. We have speci specifically laid out areas in the southern part of the Gaza Strip where we don't expect there to be fighting. And that's the right place for the humanitarian effort. That's the right place for the civilians to go. There is also fear in Gaza tonight, of course, because they worry, people in Gaza worry that after this four-day truce, uh, if there aren't any more negotiations done for hostage releases, the bombardment will continue. That's why they should go to the humanitarian zones. They'll be safer there. 
So you're asking people to move uh, again after the, the four days if this uh, truce doesn't get extended? Well, first of all, there are balls in Hamas' court on that. That's very clear. Uh, Hamas has the ability to extend the humanitarian pause if that's their decision. Right? I've been very clear about that. If Hamas decides not to extend, we will continue the campaign against Hamas, and our goal remains the same. We want all our hostages out, and we want to see the destruction of Hamas's military machine and a new reality in Gaza. We don't want to see the Gaza Strip ruled by this ruthless terrorist organization. And frankly, it's getting rid of Hamas isn't just good for Israel. It's good for the many Gazans who want a better life. Mr. Regev, thank you very much for joining us here on the program. Thank you for having me.